look at the market. Every AI company in the world is going after the service market. And you know, who's going to be better at delivering AI agentic success with customer service? Salesforce. I'm here with Salesforce co-founder and CTO, the one and only Parker Harris. Parker, we have made it here to Dreamforce. We're here. One year. We've been here, well, actually. We it, have. I we mean, have. this is day three, right? Yes. Yeah. It, you have to check. We have to check. It's hard to know on Dreamforce days. Or maybe Dream Day four, because I, I I started on Monday. How about you? Well, APAC started last Friday, so oh, all right. <laughs> okay, it's not a competition. APAC works hard. Now, Parker, <laughs> so much has changed. AI has changed. Your role has changed. Let's yeah. start off with AI. Since we last met, it's been an explosion of technology. What do you What do you think? Well, you know, I think when we last met, um, it was still early on that explosion of large language models hitting the tipping point when OpenAI just hit like that previous February, right? Correct, correct. And uh, there was a lot of magic happening. I think at that point, it was a lot of great demonstrations of the technology. I think what's changed is over 7,500 agents have been built by our oh customers. They're Already? walking out of this conference and it's not our agents, it's their agents on their data that work and that they're going to use to do work on their behalf to make them more productive. We wanted everyone to understand, well, what are agents and what is Salesforce's role in delivering generative AI uh, success to them? And everyone's leaving with that. It's oh amazing. Goodness. Things yeah. are moving so fast though. Literally, when we spoke last, I think you and I were talking about how do we skill up on this stuff? How can our customers get going? You're mentioning people are building agents right here. What's your recommendation? Well, it's pretty simple. Go to Trailhead, which basically walks you through building your own agent. And it will take your data from your website uh, and, and as a starting point. And it will create the topics you need to answer questions. It will build the skills for you. And you're going to understand how easy it is. People are building agents in 20 minutes that are doing magical wow. things. And it's just the beginning. Where do you think the biggest impact will be? Is it in sales? Is it in service, marketing, certain industry? You know, I, I think the message here is going to impact every industry and every, uh, every department. So it's going to impact sales, service, marketing, commerce. It's going to impact development. Uh, but if, you know, if I have to choose one place where we'll have the most impact first, it's going to be in service. Customer service. It's customer service. I mean, every, look at the market. Every AI company in the world is going after the service market. And you know, who's going to be better at delivering AI agentic success with customer service is Salesforce. You've been talking to customers all week. What are you hearing? What's the feedback from some of our top customers? Number one, the, the, uh, the technology and the message has been heard and, and learned. And so everyone's like, wow, this is real. This works. Uh, I think the other thing they're saying is, how do I take that leap to let that agent out in the wild and go and, and answer a call for me? And one, one person said something really smart to me. He said, well, I'm not going to take a thousand graduates from college or high school or what have you and throw them in my call center tomorrow with zero training and see what happens and you know, assume that they're going to be successful. And so you're not going to throw a thousand agents into your call center without giving them the right skills, without giving them the right knowledge. And also without the right right monitoring of like and guardrails. are these call these yeah. guardrails are, are the calls working are they not working, you know no human is going to be 100 percent perfect in a call center situation as an example, and no agent's going to be as well, and so that's why we also have all these capabilities to uh, you know audit you know when the customer says thumbs down I don't think that really helped me like I wanted we're going to transfer that uh, that caller to a human because it's humans and I working together. But not only that, that, that was a signal. What happened there? And so the people behind the scenes are going to go and look at that and say, well, okay, there was that call, there was the question, something happened. Maybe there was a missing skill. Maybe there was some missing knowledge. And we're gonna go back, or, or maybe we need more, even, even more sophisticated planning than the Atlas planner. Oh, which wow, is like okay. this amazing, the reasoning engine. The reasoning engine that we, we invented only recently that's gonna keep getting better. And, and either our customers or Salesforce, or actually both of us together, are going to keep improving this experience. So it's going to be 50% success, 60, 70. It's going to keep getting better so that humans can be more productive with AI. Tell me, you mentioned the Atlas and the reasoning engine. Yeah. And 12 months ago, there was a lot of other attempts at this AI, right? 
yeah. chatbots, co-pilots. What's the difference between what we're offering and, and all of those? Well, you know, 25 years ago, uh, we told people, well, why are you going and buying computers? And why are you, you know, buying that software on a CD and, and hiring people to install in, you know, those computers? And upgrade and, and all upgrade that. Upgrade it. It's the same message now. It's like, well, it's fine. We've all wasted money DIYing our AI. But um, do you really need to go build your own model? That's really expensive. Do you really need to stand up your own infrastructure? And wh why do that? Like, Focus on your business. And so that's why Salesforce has built an open platform. We have incredible AI. We have an incredible reasoning engine. We have an LLM gateway, so you can use all kinds of different LLMs uh, and you can get, get your job done. But all of this is just going to get better. And, you know, and I think Salesforce is the best position because of the combination of data, you know, with all of the data that you have in Salesforce and data cloud, even better, all the data that you're connecting you know, zero copy, unlocking that trap data, the customer 360 applications, yes. all those touch points, you know, and then agent force, connecting all of the AI on top of that, you know, and by the way, Slack as a front end, all of that, let yes. me tell you, because you know, I think We're Slack, going there, we're okay, going there. Let's go there. Yeah. So look, uh, when we last talked, you had a different role. I did. N now you've got a brand new role. Maybe you want to share what that role it is. It was a little crazy. <laughs> it was a little crazy. And tell us what you're doing there. The, the co-founder of Slack, Cal, Cal Henderson, brilliant uh, person who created Slack with uh, Stuart Butterfield and a couple others, he uh, decided that he wanted to step down. And I figured I could play the co-founder card. Yes. As well as the technology card that I, that I have over 25 years here that I could work with this amazing team at Slack. They're incredible people and incredible technology and that we can do more with Slack. And if you think about the opportunity now, if you want a conversational interface to AI, which is basically, the, the, that's what AI is about right now, Slack is the place to go. Tell me and our audience what's coming and some okay. of the recent innovations around AI and Slack. Well, I'm going to give it all to you. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So first and foremost, we just want to make Slack a better place to get work done. So yes, it's good for messaging. I can work in context in a channel. I have a list of things I have to get done, and I have, need you to help me with something uh, at this conference, let's say, or this, or even what we're doing right now. Yeah. If we were planning this, I have lists. You know, if you don't go to Google Spreadsheets, don't go to you all know, do it in the flow of work. Do it in the flow of work and create a simple table but I could assign items to you, I can refer to channels, I can refer to other messages, that I can do a, a structured table of information. I can create documents with Canvas, workflows. All of this is coming together, huddles. You know, Instead of leaving the flow of work to actually meet with you virtually, just spin up a huddle. And when I spin up that huddle, the AI is with me. It's summarizing what we're talking about. I can, like, when I'm talking to you and chatting with you, it's not left off in a silo of trap data of Gchat that, or Zoom or whatever where I have to remember to save that chat transcript and put it somewhere. You know, it's all stored back in Slack. But people don't understand how to use the power of all this together. Mm -hmm. Like, you could use Slack for project management. You know, don't oh, we do. Use, we do in marketing. Don't mm -hmm. use all these other tools that are out there that, you know, they're perfectly good for some use cases. Just use Slack. But if you don't understand how to do it, you know what we did 25 years ago is we created App Exchange. That's what's coming out in Slack. It's called Templates, where you can say, oh, here's a workflow, here's a channel, here's a, a canvas and a list, all together to do marketing campaigns for the quarter, tied back to Salesforce, by the way. So that's the second thing, Ooh. is we are deeply, deeply integrating Slack and Salesforce together. So it's really just going to become one platform. For the traditional customers of Salesforce who've never had Slack before, this is what you're offering them. Or the customers of Slack who never had mm. Salesforce, it's, it's both. You know, if you're going to live in Slack as the front end of Salesforce, what, what do you need? Well, you need the data of Salesforce coming to you and Salesforce channels. So in a channel, I have new tabs. So I have a messages tab. That's what everybody knows. But I'm talking to you about this marketing campaign in Australia for Agentic AI or Agent Force. Well, what was that campaign in Salesforce? Oh, it's right here. I clicked on the tab. There's the campaign information right in Slack. I didn't leave. Um, there's a Canvas template of the campaign pulling data from Salesforce and pulling data uh, summarized in AI, pulling data from other places out on the web. And, by the way, maybe I'm sitting in Salesforce. You remember Chatter? Yeah, I remember I'm gonna Chatter. I'm going to kill Chatter. I built Chatter, <laughs> I'm going to kill Chatter. 
God rest its soul. <laughs> Crossing can, the chasm. You here. can keep <laughs> using chatter if you want, totally <laughs> fine. But remember when you were in Salesforce and you're collaborating around information and chatter and, and you're looking at a, an account or a contact or a case, and you don't want to leave, you just want to work yeah. together, you're going to have a, a, a Salesforce channel right there. It's the Slack interface appearing in Lightning. You're not going to leave. And if you go into Slack, you're going to see the Salesforce interface appearing in a Slack UI. And so it's becoming this seamless experience where you're just in the flow of work. You're going to live where you need to. It's all going to be fl working together. So more and more, our systems are just going to work more and more together. And we need SI partners. We need developers out there to help us show the customers the way with all of the power. Well, you've been busy, Parker. I can tell like there's it's, things. Uh, it's been a little <laughs> over six months. I think a lot has happened in six months. Look, uh, I guess all I would ask is like, what's next? Like it's moving so fast. Yeah. You've, you've described a roadmap there. What's else? Is there anything else that you've left off the table here? We all need to focus on AI and Asian Force is the AI for Salesforce. And we want every single customer to understand it, to implement it, to get the value from it, to give us the feedback because you know, they're leaving with 7,500, 8,000, maybe it'll be 10,000 by the time we're done. Agents out there in the world with our customers, we want those to go live in production. We want developers to help us, help us make them better. We want those agents leveraging the skills of all that we've talked about, all of Slack. I mean, look at the pace of change. A year from now, it's going to be totally different. Yes. Uh, but we're going to remain laser focused on AI and not get distracted. Well, Parker, I feel like we've started an annual tradition here of maybe forecasting the future. I want to thank you for always sharing your time with the APAC region. Pleasure. We really appreciate it. And we're going to get you down in the region sometime down soon, Honda. right? <laughs> I'll be there. Yeah. Well, Andrew, thank, you. thank you. Thank you so much, Parker. Really appreciate it. Wonderful. Take care.